Welcome to day four of West Montgomery Blues. This is D natural blues, a 12 bar blues in D. This is the second chorus of his solo. So he starts off using a substitution that you see all the time, a C major seven over that D seven. This sound. Over that D seven, super nice. Now the line he's playing is this. It would behoove you to memorize this shape for C major 7 or any major 7 arpeggio. Because he's really using that as the basis. So he's doing this. And he is using that A note in there, which is the 6, but it's really based around that shape. Now he goes from there to outline the change to the 4 minor chord by just switching to a D minor sound. So D minor over that G7 really gives you the right sound for a West Montgomery blues or any jazz blues. And then he goes and plays bebop when it gets back to that D7 chord. He goes. That's a super cool line. So it's really outlining an A minor sound on that D7. So that's A and then this chromatic enclosure around that C note, which is the flat seven of the D seven, or if you're thinking about the substitutions, the flatted three of that A minor. So that's just a shape inside that D seven, one, two, three, five. And then you see that kind of enclosure around that A note in any gypsy jazz song, a lot of jazz guys do it too, so. He's just going down in A minor and resolves to the note D. So to me, that whole line is really focused around that A minor 7 shape superimposed over that D7 to give you the sound. Now, he goes out for the next measure. Now, Wes Montgomery's way of going out is really playing inside chromatic changes that leads him where he wants to go. So what he's imagining is going to that G7 and using an A flat seven to get there. But he doesn't stop at the A flat seven, he does a two five. E flat minor seven to A flat seven. Wes takes this a step forward and he superimposes the sound of a G flat major seven over that entire thing. So both these chords, he's putting this sound on top of them. That's the idea. Now, you can see that G flat sound right here and he's just playing right out of it. So the ending there has an enclosure. And I think like that, that part of the lick you can really think about as an A flat major. So he's thinking about like G flat major, A flat major, going to G. Pretty cool line. So up to this point you have this. Now, he is in the four chord. He plays a really cool line on it that's really focused around the G Lydian dominant sound, but he uses an approach note to get to the root, which you can always do. It sounds like this. Let's just break that down for a second. So approach note to the root, that's just a Lydian dominant scale. G Lydian dominant D melodic minor. And then there's an arpeggio here on top. You can call that a C sharp augmented triad. So the line goes like this. So this whole descending part is just staying in that G mixolydian world for the four chord. 
So the descending part goes... From this point, he just plays D minor pentatonic down. And then that minor third to the major third. And then root fifth to resolve. So that whole line goes... So let me play the whole phrase from the beginning. One, two, three. We have this all transcribed for you, tabbed out, notated, it's down in the link below through our Patreon. Go there, have all the supplementary material you'll ever dream of, Wes, Sonny Stitt, we did a bunch of stuff, Django, it's all there for you. So we'll see you tomorrow for another episode.